Leader of the Opposition, Keir Starmer. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I join the Prime Minister? Our prayers go out to those who capsized in the freezing waters of the Channel last night. It's a reminder that the criminal gangs running those routes put the lives of the desperate at risk and profit from their misery. They must be broken up and brought to justice. Yeah. Mr Speaker, tomorrow will be the first ever nationwide nurses' strike. All the Prime Minister has to do to stop that is to open the door and discuss pay with them. If he did, the whole country would breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah. Why won't he? Yeah. Prime Minister. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, we, we have consistently spoken to all the unions involved in all the pay disputes that there are. But I am, I am glad he's raised our nurses because they do do incredible work. And it's worth putting on record, it's worth putting on record what exactly we have done for our nurses. Last year, last year when the rest... Last year, when everyone else in the public sector had a public sector pay freeze, the nurses received a 3% pay rise. When the RCN asked for more in-work training, we gave every nurse and midwife a £1,000 training budget. And when they asked for nurses' bursaries, we made sure that every nursing student received a £5,000 grant. That's because we do work constructively and we will continue to back our nurses. Mr Speaker, nurses going on strike is a badge of shame for this yeah. government. Instead of showing leadership, he's playing games with people's health. Yeah. And there is a human cost. Alex from Chester has been waiting for a gallbladder operation for nearly six months. He's in so much pain, he's been off school since then. His operation has already been cancelled twice. His mum, who I spoke to this morning, is worried sick. When she heard that strikes could be called off, she was massively relieved. She's desperate for the Prime Minister to resolve this. All he needs to do is simply meet the nurses. Now, Alex's mum is listening to this. She doesn't want to hear him blaming everybody else. She doesn't want his usual ducking of the question. She's tuned in now because she wants him to explain what is he going to do to resolve the nursing strike. Yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, it's not just Alex. There are millions of others across this country. <laughs> Alex and Mark. Millions of others. Millions of others who will have their health care disrupted because of the strike. Now, the Honourable Gentleman says to get round the table, but we all know what that means, Mr Speaker. That is just simply a political formula for avoiding taking a position on this issue. If he, if he, thinks, if he thinks the strikes are wrong, he should say so. If he thinks it's right, if he thinks it's right that pay demands of 19% are met, then he should say so. What's, what's weak, Mr Speaker, is he's not strong enough to stand up to the union. Mr Speaker, we know it's Christmas, but the party's not started yet. Come on, kiss Mr Speaker... Mr Speaker, in, in 12 hours' time, there's a nurses' strike. All he needs to do is meet the nurses. His inaction speaks volumes. As ever with this Prime Minister, it's Tory politics first, patients second. We've never seen a nurses' strike like this before. They've been forced into it because the government has broken the health system. Ask anyone in the NHS. They will tell you they don't have enough staff. 133,000 vacancies. And there's an obvious solution. Scrap the non-DOM status and use the money to bring through the next generation of doctors and nurses. That's what Labour would do. Why hasn't he got the guts to do it? Mr Speaker, we're already investing billions more in the NHS. We're already 
already hiring thousands more doctors and nurses. But he asked, he asked, he asked about backlog. He asked about backlogs and the waiting times in the NHS. And yes, what he always fails to acknowledge is the impact that COVID did, Mr. Speaker. That's why we're facing pressures. But we do have a plan. Not just more money, not just more doctors and nurses, new diagnostic centres carrying out millions of checks and scans, new surgical hubs delivering more elective surgery. But we'd, if, if we'd listened to him, Mr. Speaker, the back clock would still be growing and that's because we'd still be in lockdown. Uh, as usual, Mr Speaker, he tries to blame everyone else. His department, his department commissioned a report into the NHS which reported on Monday. That report said we've had 10 years of managed decline. Yep. It was not COVID. Yep. Responsibility is sitting right there. Absolutely. And the reason he can't choose nurses over non-DOMs is because he's too weak to stand up for tax avoiders. For 12 years, they haven't trained enough doctors and nurses. So we have the absurd situation of the NHS spending billions on agency workers to fill the gap. Why should the country have to put up with money that should be spent treating patients being wasted, plugging gaps instead? Mr. Speaker, let me tell the Honourable Gentleman what we are doing. We are actually listening to the independent pay review bodies. They want to undermine them. We've offered a fair pay deal. They can't even decide on a number amongst themselves. We're actually protecting the public. They're protecting their paymasters, Mr. Speaker. I did. For working people in this country, for working people in this country, it's Labour's nightmare before Christmas. There he goes again, pretending everything is fine. Try telling that to those on waiting lists or those that can't afford to pay for a next day GP appointment. After 12 years of Tory failure, winter has arrived for our public services. And we've got a Prime Minister who has curled up in a ball and gone into hibernation. <laughs> if, if he can't act on behalf of patients or nurses or everyone who wants these strikes called off, then surely the whole country is entitled to ask, what is the point of him and what is the point of the government he's supposed to be leading? Mr Speaker, he talks about COVID not having an impact. Ambulance waiting times for Category 1. Category 1 ambulance waiting times in February of 2020 were actually completely on target, Mr Speaker. COVID has had an impact. And that's why, that's why, that's why, as, as the Chief Executive of the NHS has acknowledged, this government is serious about its commitment to prioritise the NHS. But, Mr Speaker, let's just have a look at the NHS in Labour-run Wales, shall we? The worst A&E times in the country, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, under the last Labour government, we had fair pay for nurses and no strikes. So I won't, I won't be taking lectures from him about that. Order, order, order. Mr Bowie, you promised to behave. Don't give me a Christmas present you won't want. Come on, kiss down. Mr Speaker, this is our final PMQs of the year. So I hope you will part... Oh, really? I hope you will... <laughs> Mr Speaker, what I was going to say was I hope you will pass on all of our thanks, at least on this side, to all those who kept our house and our democracy working. Yeah. And I want to finish this year thinking about our friends in Ukraine. As a result of Putin's barbaric assault on their freedom, millions will spend Christmas in sub-zero temperatures without heating, electricity or hot water. Their suffering is unimaginable but their bravery is awe-inspiring. So will the Prime Minister join me in saying that whatever other difficulties and disagreements we have across this dispatch box, we are and will remain united in our unwavering support for Ukraine's freedom, its liberty and its victory. Yeah. 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 
Well, Mr Speaker, can I join with the honourable gentleman in thanking and paying tribute to all the staff of the House for the fantastic work that they do to support all of us. Uh, and I appreciate his comments on Ukraine. It has been a point of incredible unity across this House and indeed the country, something that we can all be proud of in our country, that we have stood behind Ukraine at its hour of need. And as I said yesterday, this Christmas, many families will be laying an extra place at their Christmas table, and that speaks to the generosity and compassion of our nation, and long may that continue. Yeah.